crap. <laughs> um, I love photography, and I hope photography is going to love me a, a little bit longer. Um, firstly, thank you to all of you for coming. Now, I've got to do a demonstration because I'm not against Canon, Nikon, Pentax, Hasselblad, or anything, because I've used all these cameras. I absolutely love these cameras. Why do I connect them? But, but what happened is a guy by the name of Steve Sasson, who was employed by Kodak, developed the digital sensor. He bankrupted his own company because they had no faith in what they were selling. They went from 98,000 staff down to 11,800, which they presently had. They got resurrected by selling their souls and their patents to the Japanese companies because they didn't believe that their own invention would make money. What actually happened is all the four companies grabbed their cameras and said, we've got a, we've got a camera, we're going to slap a sensor in the back instead of film, and we're going to make a digital camera. There's a funny little corporation in Japan called Olympus. I don't know how many of you know that they are the largest manufacturer in the world medical equipment. They have a 70% share worldwide, but they're actually known as a camera company. They have utilized their technology, their micro technology and everything to make cameras smaller. So what happened is the average guy who buys a Nikon or a Canon and a Minolta will buy a camera and it has what we call a flange back distance. It's the distance from the front of the lens to where the form of the sensor was. That distance dictates how big your lens is going to be. So if that distance was that big, your lenses would be that big. They also had a system in it, what we call the mirror flapping cameras. These things that flap up and down, mirrors. Listen to them. Terrible. Imagine you're trying to photograph the poop and you're not allowed to. And you're <coughs> flapping up and up. So Olympus said, we need to get rid of these mirrors. And we need to get rid of this pentaprism. So what they did, find my tools. And I'm sorry, I'm going to have to change my glasses for this because it is such a dangerous operation. <laughs> so I've, I've had these glasses manufactured, Fleming, by the way. <laughs> manufactured. They've got high tensile glass in it. And, and, and the first thing we, we're going to want to do is, is they said, guys, let's get rid of the, the mirror. <laughs> Who wants the mirror? And the mirror. <laughs> That was the first step. Then the next step, they said, well, why do we want a pentaprism? And a pentaprism reads from a focusing screen, and there's a focusing screen in the camera. So let's see if we can get the focusing screen out. That thing is built in and it's, it's difficult to get out. Of. Ah, they used this piece of focus with. <laughs> and then it's a painter prism. Okay, I can't destroy a painter prism. This is one of the most beautiful painter prisms that's ever been produced by Nikon. And incidentally, I do not Nikon cameras. I always have. So they said, let's take the pent prism off. By doing that, they managed to reduce the flange back distance from the front there to the sensor to that, which allowed them to take a 600 millimeter lens that Canon and Nikon produced that are that big, down to a little thing that big. What happened then? There were little things that happened. There were little things that happened. They said the death of the mirror flashing camera. <laughs> <laughs> and the 
camera to me. <laughs> Can the death remove that in camera? <laughs> I'm taking the camera home and the new life is mirrorless. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no.